Hello, God bless you. Welcome to Daily Bread and Water, where we take a daily look at a Bible verse. Because just like we need that physical food and water for our physical bodies, we also need that spiritual bread and water for our spiritual bodies. Jesus says that we cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we're just giving you an appetizer. It's up to you to be a Berean. Search the scriptures for yourself, finish the meal, and read the rest of the chapter for yourself. Jesus says, For those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. We got a beautiful verse here today. Three verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the rapture chapter. We know that 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says that Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. The dead in Christ will rise first, and we which are alive and remain will be cut up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We know that from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is a similar but different verse that is talking about the rapture. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but this event that is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, or chapter 4, excuse me. Is, is a rapture chapter is rapture verses and so is this 1 Corinthians 15 51 we're going to read 52 and 53 behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed sleep here means die he says we shall not all die but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall be, shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The dead in Christ rise first. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Isn't that beautiful? When that trumpet sounds in the trunk of an eye, we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord in this sinful nature body. We will take it off like we put, like take off clothes and we'll put on immortality, incorruptible bodies, a body that will never sin. We will be like the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? In that body, that incorruptible, immortal body, we won't have sicknesses, we won't have pain, there will be no more death. We can sweep a, sweep a floor without our back hurting. I don't know if we'll sweep a floor, there's probably never going to be dust, I don't know, but but we won't have back pains, we won't have, you know, whatever pain you may be dealing with right now in heaven, in that incorruptible body when we get those new bodies at the rapture we will feel no pain we won't have any sicknesses it's going to be so beautiful I'm excited for that day, I don't know about y'all soon and very soon going to happen. So we're going to take out these bodies that are dying day by day. And we're going to put on a body that will never die. I'm looking forward to that. I don't know about y'all. Well, I pray you got something out of the video. If you did, give God glory. Remember, always read the word for yourself. Don't take my word or message for it. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures for yourself. You know, we all have this void in our life. Some call it a God-shaped hole. And we try to fill that void with everything that the world has to offer. You may try to fill that void with sex, with alcohol, with drugs, with money, with friendship, with popularity, with advancements in your career, promotions. You may try to fill it with cars, with, with houses. 
but nothing can fill that void. You know, you may try to fill that void and hit rock bottom. Or you may try to fill that void. You may achieve what you're seeking, whether it be houses or money or cars. You may get that. But you could still be in a crowded room and still fill alone. And the reason is, is because only God can fill that void. That's why it's called the God-shaped hole. And that void is there because we are all sinners. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. There's none of us that is righteous. No, not a one. You see, originally, in the garden, God walked with man. We see in Genesis chapter 3 that God walked in the garden in the cool of the evening when Adam and Eve hid. Why did they hide? Because sin separated us from God. And not only does sin separate us from God, it creates a valley between God and man. And with each sin, that valley gets deeper in water. Now the only way to atone for that sin and for God to fill that void in your life, that God-shaped hole, it's by the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. That's the only way that that valley can be atoned. In the Old Testament, they used to use the blood of bulls and goats, of animal sacrifices. They were a temporary bridge. Like you see there, the little rope bridge. Why they're a temporary bridge is because as the person would sin again, they'd have to offer another animal. And their sin would create a deeper and wider valley, causing the bridge to collapse. There's nothing that can bridge that gap between God and man, not animal sacrifices, not works. It's only Jesus and what he did on the cross. You know, it's like you're in a jail cell. The jailer opens the door and he says, you're free to go. Someone paid your bail. But you're relying on your own works, on the fact that you could be a good enough person so you stay in that cell saying, no, I'm good. I'm a good person. I can get out of here on my own. You deny the free ticket to get out of jail. And if you let sin continue to create that valley, then you will be eternally separated from God. And that's what it looks like. It means hell because the punishment for, for our sin is death. If you don't trust in Jesus to fill that God-shaped hole, then hell is where you'll spend eternity. Hell is not rock sunk concerts and orgies. Hell is suffering, torture, and torment, day and night forever, with no relief. I don't want you to go there, neither does Jesus. Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus left his throne in heaven. He became flesh. He wasn't an angel. He wasn't a ghost. He was flesh and blood and bone. He was born of a virgin. He was fully God and fully man. He wasn't a prophet. He lived a perfect sinless life. He came to earth to die. That's why he left his throne in heaven was to die for us. And just like the animal sacrifice had to be completely perfect, with no spot, no blemish, no defect. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for us. He died a brutal death. Suffered God's wrath in our place. The punishment we deserve for our sins was poured out on Jesus. Our sins, past, present, and future, died on the cross with Jesus. 
Our sins were nailed to that cross, and Jesus' blood covered those sins. Jesus died redeeming, buying us back. When we put our trust in that Jesus died for our sins, and bought our free ticket into heaven, then Jesus builds that permanent bridge between us and God. And one day in heaven, we will walk with God. We'll see God face to face. But you have to have Jesus in your heart. There's a big difference between knowing who Jesus is, knowing what he did for you, just knowing Jesus is like sending a celebrity a message on social media. That's a big difference between sending a message on social media and actually knowing that celebrity personally. You eat together, you have meals together, you watch movies together, you children play in the yard together. Just like with a celebrity, there's a big difference between knowing who Jesus is intellectually and what he did for you and actually having Jesus in your heart. Just knowing who Jesus is and what Jesus did for you is like me giving you a bottle of water. The bottle of water is in your hand and it's unopened. You're still thirsty because even though you're holding the bottle, you still have to do your part, open it and drink it. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was like handing you the bottle of water. You have to do your part believe in him and accept his free gift. When you have Jesus in your heart, you'll talk to him in prayer. You'll read his word, the Bible. You'll put Jesus first, before your family, before your job, before your money. Yeah, we'll still sin, but you'll, you'll want to please him. You won't want to do what you used to do. You want to please God. So Jesus is coming back to set up his earthly kingdom. And the requirement to enter the kingdom is that we must be absolutely, absolutely perfect without sin. And there's no one that's without sin. All of us face eternal judgment and separation from God. That's why we must receive Jesus in our life as Lord. He is the only one that will live a perfect life for us and be, became the substitute for our sins. He rose from the dead, proving that he was God. Because death and the grave had no power over him. And he wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. But we must first individually receive him. This is what it means to believe in Jesus. And just like works do not get you into heaven, Neither does just knowing who Jesus is. You have to have him in your heart. It's that simple. It's ABC simple, in fact. A is for admit. Admit your, that you need Jesus. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit that you can't do this on your own, that you need Jesus. B is for believe. Believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and was buried, and God raised him from the dead. Believe they paid the price for your sins, and that Jesus died for you. See, it's for call or confess. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Call in the name of the Lord. Confess, repent of your sins, which means repent means to turn away, to change your mind. Here's a sample prayer, dear God, I am a sinner, I need your forgiveness, because it separates me from you. Thank you for loving me so much that you sent your son Jesus to pay the penalty for my sin. I know I can never be good enough to earn salvation because it is a gift from you. I believe Jesus Christ lived a sinless life and was crucified, died, and was buried. And after three days, you raised him to life again. 
I am sorry and I repent and turn away from my sins. I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life as my Savior. I accept your free gift of salvation and I place my trust in you only. Thank you, Jesus. And from this moment on, my life is yours. Amen. Just some little sample prayer like that. Don't have to be that exact prayer. Just something from your heart. Just crying out to Jesus. Just turn into him. When you do, you'll be saved. Because you know, you're not alive by accident. You were created for a purpose. God didn't just create you just to fill the earth. God had a plan for you. When God formed you in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life. And when you accept Jesus' free gift, and you invite Jesus into your life, then God gives you a new heart. And God begins to mold you into the person that he created you to be when he put you in, his mother, in your mother's womb. So say you want to build a house with some Legos. When you dump the Legos on the table, as you see here in the picture, it doesn't look like a house yet, does it? Now we have to snap the bricks together. And that's how God's molding us into who he created us to be. God's not throwing, just throwing us out there. He's continually molding us into who he created us to be. Because even though we're saved, we're still, we still sin. Because we're unfinished. God's still working on us. He's still molding us into who he created us to be. And I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about how you can be saved today. Religion will put you in chains. And will tell you what to do and what not to do. But Jesus will set you free right now. There is nothing that you need to do. So don't wait. Don't put off Jesus. Don't put him off till you get to the point in time in your life where you or financially secure or whatever it is you may be holding on to that you want to be have this before you come to Christ come to him now or don't wait till you stop a sin like say you don't you want to wait till you stop drinking come to him now and he will help you take that away because Jesus is really coming back very soon and you don't have time to wait Tomorrow just might be one day too late. And you don't want to miss it because you you were going to do it tomorrow. Do it now. So turn to Jesus today. Well, I pray you got something out of this. If you did, give God glory. Can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing, or maybe we'll see you in the clouds.